learning performance patterns from the internet can make it difficult to know what content to bother listening to. So here's the thought. Listen to your data. My name is Joanna Smith, and one of the most important things that you can learn is how to trust your tools over someone else's rules. Because talking about performance on the internet can often sound prescriptive. Like someone will run off and write a huge benchmark that'll measure this and that and this too and oh yeah that. But all of these findings get boiled down to something like, we switched from relative layout to linear layout for performance. And then when people hear this, they internalize it into a hard rule. If I see a relative layout, I should use a linear one instead. But blindly following prescriptive performance advice from bald guys on the internet can be dangerous. The fact is, any performance advice may or may not apply to your particular situation. For example, your core users could be on a different device tier than what the tests were ran on, or the performance problem might be fixed in a later release of the platform, or it might be a performance problem, but in your application, it's just not an issue. This is why we like to say tools, not rules. That is, before you run off and implement some performance patterns that you found on the internet, make sure that your tools are confirming it's even a problem. This is as simple as running the performance tools on your application and then focusing your energy on fixing the bottlenecks that eat away at your frame rate. For example, iterators may be the slowest way to traverse a list, but if your tools show that this is not a perf problem for your frame rate, then there's no use changing your existing iterator code. However, it's always a good idea to know what could be a problem so that when you do run a tool, you know what all of that fancy data means. Now, once you've made a routine of relying on your tools to validate what perf problems to focus on, the next big step is figuring out how to do this on a regular basis. Most people agree that it is a smart idea to run tons of unit tests before checking in code or submitting new builds to users. These tests help to make sure that your code is generally stable. So finding ways to create unit tests for performance will help you identify areas where your code may have dropped in terms of user-facing quality. To help you automate this process, there are some great tools like Monkey Runner or the Espresso Library. Combine these with the process field by data, not prescriptions, and you can identify the perf problems in your app. Now, if you want to fix those problems, check out the rest of the Android Performance Patterns content, or take a look at our G community for questions and advice. But keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, perf matters.